in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be talking about outlines. I hear a lot of people, a lot of authors go, oh, I don't want to outline. Outlines are too constricting. But you know what? That's simply not the truth. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about why outlines are not rigid things that contract your creativity, but actually allow it to go through. In fact, I'm so much a believer in outlines. I even created a t-shirt. There you go. Embrace the turtle way. The turtle, and I will go into that, the turtle embraces outlining. Rabbit doesn't. So stay tuned. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this episode. Are you an entrepreneur, small business owner, or consultant looking to boost your authority, influence, and impact? The Author Switch Podcast with best-selling, award-winning author Karma Spence is your answer. Tune in for actionable advice, powerful strategies, and engaging interviews to turn on your author switch and take your business to the next dimension. The Author Switch. Hi, I'm back. This is Karma Spence, and I am the host of the Author Switch podcast. I help entrepreneurs write a client tracking book in 90 days or less. And like I said, I hear a lot of authors say, I don't want to write an outline because it will cramp my creativity. It's too much structure and it's overwhelming. Or I need flexibility when I write. Well, guess what? All of those excuses, and I dare say they are excuses, are based on the idea that an outline is this rigid structure that once it's created, you cannot veer away from. But that is simply not true. So let me tell you a story. You've got two authors. You've got turtle author and you've got rabbit author. Rabbit author loves to prance around in the fields and follow her muse and do whatever she likes. And you know what happens to rabbit author? She goes down rabbit writing holes and she spends a lot of time writing stuff that she'll never use. And she gets lost and sometimes she gets stuck and sometimes her writing never gets fixed because that writing rabbit hole went too deep and she can't figure her way out. But turtle author, he's a little bit more methodical. He plans his books and he writes an outline that he uses as a roadmap to get him to the finish line. He uses his outlines as a sort of guideposts and guidelines so that he can actually get to that finish line. And if along the way, it turns out he needs to take a detour, he can take a detour because he knows where he's going. He has a general idea of how he wants to get there. And that means he can stop at any point and redo the outline to better fit where the book is turning out going. And what's beautiful, even better, is when you let your inner turtle author and your inner rabbit author work together. Because when turtle plans out, rabbit can bounce around all she wants inside that outline. And what you get is a fantastic book. So first, I want to help you understand your false beliefs about outlining. These false beliefs might be preventing you from embracing the turtle way. First, a lot of authors believe that their outlines need to be detailed. They don't really. You can literally have an outline that's like four bullet points or five bullet points or 10 bullet points. It's just saying, I want to cover these things in this general order. They don't need to include every minor detail. They just need to be the general roadmap. I want to go this direction. I want to go from I don't know, New York to Maine. And not talk about what's in between. Some authors avoid outlines because they believe it needs to be set in stone. And that is absolutely not true. 
let me tell you a story about a little book called Public Speaking Superpowers. Not only had I created my outline and my table of contents, I had posted it on my website saying, this is what the content of my book is going to be. And then I started writing the book. And I realized, I forgot an entire chapter that needs to be in there. And I ended up having to reorganize some of the content because it didn't quite fit the way I initially thought it would. And that's okay. That's okay. That happens. Uh, another reason why a lot of people avoid writing an outline for the book is because they think it needs to follow some standard format like Roman numeral I followed by capital A followed by baby A or, or numeral one. And you can do it that way if that way works for you, but you don't have to. I usually just kind of like, here's my general chapters. Here's some bullet points of what I want to include in each chapter. And then as I work on that chapter, I realize, yeah, that's working or no, it's not working. Or maybe it will work if I just tweak it this little way. There's no, the structure that you use is the one that works for you. That doesn't need to be rigid at all. In fact, I've had some outlines follow the traditional Roman numeral, blah, blah, blah. And that worked for that project, but then I use something completely different for another project. Another reason why a lot of authors avoid outlines is because they believe that it reduces their creativity, that it's too structured. But research shows that having constraints actually frees you and makes you more creative. That's why they say necessity is the mother of invention, because it's it's when you are constrained by something or you have rules that you, you are actually more creative because now you need to use the resources you have to come up with what you need. And finally, some authors believe it's a waste of time to spend all that time up front outlining. Why not just start writing? And let me tell you, when you do that, you, you're going to go down writing rabbit holes. And when you spend the time up front planning generally how you want the book to look, it actually makes writing the book go much more quickly and easily because then you're just flushing in the outline. It, it works, works really well, works really well. So the reality of writing is that it is an iterative iterative process. That means that you're writing, you're editing, you're writing, you're editing, you're writing, you're editing, you're massaging, you're... In fact, what I usually recommend is you do your outline, then you do your first draft, what I call your brain dump. That's where you flush out the outline. And then you go into the editing process, which is my favorite part, where you massage it and you tweak it and you polish it into the diamond that it is. Now, before I move on to some further ideas, I'm going to share this quick word from a sponsor. Every great book begins with a single idea, but what transforms that idea into a masterpiece? Introducing All You Need is the Right Roadmap, your guide to navigating the writing process with ease and confidence. Unlock the secret to creating an outline that not only structures your book, but also inspires your writing journey. Embark on the path to writing success. Your adventure begins now on Amazon. Welcome back to the Author Switch Podcast. My name is Karma Spence and I help entrepreneurs write a client and lead attracting book in 90 days or less. Before the break, I talked about all the false beliefs that cause a lot of authors to not write an outline before they start their book. Now I want to talk about the idea that your outline needs to be perfect. The pressure of perfection, this quest for perfection is unrealistic. Your outline isn't going to be perfect. 
and that's okay. In fact, it's probably desired because if your outline was perfect, then you might miss out on some creativity along the way because you would think this outline is perfect. I can't stray from it. And as you're going through the process of writing and editing, you may discover that you missed something or something no longer fits with everything else. It's kind of like, all right, you got four things and one of these things is not like the other. It just doesn't fit into my book. That can happen. Or you might decide, you know, I forgot a key piece of information. And if you're treating your book, your book outline, like it is perfect and you cannot stray from it, you're going to miss out on these opportunities. You don't need to fully understand every aspect of your book before leaping into it. You just need to have the gist. And that's what your outline does. It kind of writes down that gist so that you don't forget it as you're going through the creative process of writing your book. The purpose of an outline is a tool. It is not a taskmaster. It is a tool. And it should provide structure and direction, but remain open to adjustment and evolution. So how do you work with this perfectly imperfect outline? Step one, set realistic goals. Create an outline that works for you and the book you're writing. Like I mentioned earlier, sometimes I use the traditional outlining method that I learned in school. Sometimes I just do a bunch of bullet points. Sometimes I create my table of contents. There are so many ways to outline a book. Experiment. Find the one that works for you and for the project that you're working on because different books may need different outlining techniques. For example, the book I'm working on now that will be released in May is about book marketing. And I am now on the third outline for that book. I first created it like, these are the general ideas. Okay, that didn't work. Then I thought, okay, that's too much information. Let's narrow it down onto this and then follow that. And that didn't quite work. And then because I went through that process and started writing and found that it worked, I've come up with something I'm really, really excited about. I'm organizing it into the five phases of book marketing. Why did I think of it before? Because I wasn't ready to. I wasn't ready to until I started working on the project. And that may happen to you. Your outline is a living document. This is thing two. Your outline is a living document. That means it's going to grow. It's going to change. It's going to evolve. It may or may not. It really depends. On, I mean, I've had outlines not change at all. That's really rare. Most of my outlines change and evolve as I'm working on the book because they are a living document. As you go through, you may identify gaps that, that were in the outline, but now you have an idea of what, how to fill them. And so therefore, number three, you may need periodic revisions of your outline. And that may mean you actually go and you take your outline and you revise it. Or it may be that you just you revise it on the fly as part of the, the, the organic process of writing your book. And thing number four, approach it with trial and error. You know, you're going to try things and some of them are going to work and some of them are not. And that's okay. That's what <laughs> embracing the turtle way is all about. Embrace the turtle way. The turtle is a little more methodical. So he starts off a little bit more slowly than rabbit. But we all know who wins the race, who gets to that finish line. It's turtle. This is Karma Spence. I hope you enjoyed and found some value in today's episode. I just wanted to make a, a quick announcement. I am changing the direction of this podcast. It's going to be less of these mini webinar episodes and 
I'm going to be inviting some guests on to have interesting conversations. It's I want the author switch to be a place where you can come and have your author switch turned on because you are understanding and experiencing through the eyes of me or others that I invite on what it's like to be both an entrepreneur and an author. And what is that intersection all about? What is it to be an authoneer? Someone who has the author switch turned on and is maintaining that switch in the on position. If you have ideas and know of people who know about the psychology of authorship, the ethics of authorship and entrepreneurship, all those interesting, almost tangential ideas that we can talk about here on the author switch and explore, that's where I'm going. And I will have more information for you as I distill that thought. And that's all I've got for you for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Karma Spence saying ciao for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Author Switch podcast and would like to show your support, there are a few ways that you can do that. First, I encourage you to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Additionally, leaving a rating and review would greatly help me reach more listeners and continue providing valuable content. To stay up to date with the Author Switch podcast and gain access to additional information on amplifying your authority, influence, and thought leadership through books, you can follow me on LinkedIn at Karma Spence. For those interested in catching up on previous episodes, including those no longer available on podcast platforms, you can find them all at authorswitch.com forward slash episodes, where you can choose to watch or listen to them at your convenience. Thank you so much for your support and for being a part of the Author Switch community.